This is a graph of Australian property prices, and this is a graph of Australian immigration. You can see here that from around the year 2000, we doubled the level of immigration. Could the real estate market boom be simply explained by immigration? Have we just been bringing in so many people we literally can't build the homes for everyone? If you don't know me, my name is Will Bell. I've run my mortgage brokerage since 2011, and in that time I've had a front row seat to all things finance, property, and the economy related. I run this channel because there are things that are seemingly ignored in the mainstream that I feel need to be talked about. Let's talk about immigration and the housing market. Before we get to 2000, if we go back a bit and we look at the population spike that we can see here from about 1950, Australia really started ramping up the immigration. This was the post-World War II migration boom. Interestingly, property prices start spiking at around the same time. Fast forward to the year 2000 now and you can see that immigration starts getting seriously ramped up. I like these two graphs because for me there's enough evidence to say that there is a correlation between immigration and house prices. The difference between the 50s was that there was an obvious reason for the immigration policy. The millennium was a time in our history that also gave birth to a couple of other crucial factors to Australia's current housing horrors and I'm going to touch on that right now. The year 2000 was a transition from the old Australia to the new. We'd earned our spot on the world stage and the Sydney Olympics showcased the nation to the world. The millennium was Australia's coming of age and as such we needed to reform the tax system for the new age. Firstly we halved the capital gains tax. Initially this was meant to be a temporary policy but like so many temporary government policies it has managed to survive for the last 24 years. Secondly, as a result of reforming the tax system and bringing in the GST, the federal government carried favour with the state governments by introducing the first homeowners grant. If you follow the channel, you will understand my stance on government grants and the detrimental effects they have on the housing market. Anyway, they bring demand forward, which probably isn't smart if you have a supply problem. Pre-millennium world I grew up in where family life looked like one parent working full time, generally the dad, and the mum raising kids full time, at least until they started school, was on its way out replaced with what we see today. Both parents earning more household income meant combined with reducing interest rates, higher borrowing powers, and therefore higher house prices. All of these factors have without a doubt led to where we are today. So it's crazy to think why our policymakers decided to double the immigration intake. Playing the devil's advocate here for a bit, there are genuine reasons for this. Our aging population is no secret. It's happening all across the West as the boomer generation dies out. You need more people in middle ages earning good wages to be able to tax them and afford things like aged care. Additionally, being a good world player and giving students access to our education system was in the interest of the nation. Little tangent here, what's strange about education is that most education can be done online these days. So it doesn't matter where you are so long as you have the internet. This would drive down the cost of education, which is good for everyone, isn't it? Not only that, it would reduce demand on our housing needs, which is the number one issue right now. If you disagree on that statement, please comment below on what you think is the number one issue. If you don't know this guy, his name is Tucker Carlson. Mass media hate him. He came here a little while ago, and this is what he had to say about Australia's housing market. That sounds like a crisis. Why is it happening? Well, one of the reasons it's happening is a principle we call supply and demand. And when there's a greater demand for something than there is a supply, the price rises. And that is purely a matter of population. If you have more people than you have houses, guess what happens to housing prices? They rise. This is the most obvious principle in nature and real estate. And so if I'm running a country, one of my top concerns is making sure that young people, people in their, say, late 20s, early 30s, can afford a house. Because my main goal is to create households and a new generation of Australians or Americans or Kiwis or whatever. 
here's the thing. If an outsider can clearly articulate the point on population growth and supply and demand, then how do our policymakers not see it? I'm going to give you my thoughts on why. If you have a different opinion, again, please chuck it in the comments because I don't have a monopoly on what's right or wrong. In the world of business, quite often the main incentive for the people running the business is to maximize the value of the business, which is not necessarily the same as making the business sustainable and profitable. If I'm a long-term shareholder, I want high valuations, but not at the cost of long-term profit and sustainability. A similar sort of dynamic happens when it comes to our country. Our politicians aim for economic growth, which is valued in GDP the total amount that we spend as a nation. What's good for us long-term shareholders, the Australian citizens, is that we have a country where we expect to have a roof over our heads. What's happened is that the people running this country have boosted GDP by cramming this country full of people and despite the fact that we're now at a point where homelessness is a rapidly growing concern for the most needy, they can't see it. Australia's housing crisis. Rental crisis. Cost of living crisis. Mental health crisis. Violence against women, a national crisis. What I call the everything crisis is going to get worse. It's going to continue until the people creating these policies are gone. And so my suggestion to you is that you have to make your own plans. Here's some things my clients have been considering in our conversations. Immigrating interstate or from the city to the country, I'm in Melbourne and I've definitely had clients do this. There are undoubtedly a large number of people feeling the crush down here in Melbourne. Immigrating overseas, this trend, people don't have enough super to live here and they're finding other options. This also leads to diversifying and buying assets outside of Australia. Having more cash in case of emergencies, this includes tapping equity from people's houses, selling investment properties and reducing debt, and just doing some planned retirement planning, a sign of the wealthy times we've lived through was that seemingly a lot of people ignored this and now it's becoming front and center again. The main thing that I can do is to help people get rid of their home loans. For most people, there are actually a few basic strategies that can get them an unbelievably large amount ahead. I'm talking things like pay a 30 year home loan off in 15 years. At the moment, I'm in the process of putting together a to help clients deliver these results. But first I need some guinea pigs who I'll work with free of charge. If this is you, please email me to see if we can work together. I'm only taking on five clients a month because time is precious for me also. As always, love to see your comments below. Cheers guys.